Hey everyone, welcome to another PAL World Guide. I've covered most of the game so far and wanted to show you a couple of videos on the late game stuff. And one of the things you can do much more easily late game is to run a no PAL or mount only high DPS build where you rely solely on your player to do the damage. And that means most of the time using a gun or the rocket launcher. And this build is great for exploring, farming bosses and doing dungeons. And what it isn't good at is for fighting legendaries as even on the easiest difficulties, those guys are a bit of a bullet sponge and so using pals is just a quicker method, but for anything else, this is a fun thing to do. So how does it work? Well, it's simple, we need to do all we can to increase the player's damage stat, and we also need a good weapon. So the first way we can increase our damage is to, of course, level up, and you can put as much into your damage stat as you want, but it's also not gonna make too much of a difference to the build, and I prefer to put my stats into stamina or weight or something like that, so don't worry too much about increasing your attack when you are leveling up. Next, one of the pals in game has a cool partner skill called Angry Shark. When you have Gobfin in your team, the Gobfin increases your attack stat. And by how much depends on your base damage, mine's is 120, and adding a single Gobfin brings it up to 132, so 12 points of damage. So what I did is add four Gobfins into my team to increase my attack by four to eight points. But there's also a passive skill that pals can learn that increase the player's damage. It's called Vanguard and it increases your attack stat by 10%. So with the Gobfin's partner skill and the Vanguard's passive skill, it raises my attack by 24 points. Now, if I add four Gobfins, that's 96 point increase to my attack damage rather than 48. And by adding all four, it's almost doubled my attack. Now, when you're reading your Gobfins for this build, you can give them any stats you like, but obviously, since this is a player build, you should consider using the skill Stronghold Strategist to increase your defense by 10% as well. And for Gobfins, adding this to all four of them will increase my defense by 60 points. So, so far we have Gobfins, all four have Vanguard, and all four have Stronghold Strategist to give you 96 points of increased your attack and 60 to your defense. We then have one more slot to test out, and we have four possible choices. One is of course just to keep a slot open for your regular mount so you can get around more easily. The second choice is to add another gobfin and that did increase our attack a little bit and our defense so it's definitely something you can consider. The third option is to add a robin quill and that's because it has a partner skill to boost weak point damage and while it does it's only actually half the amount of simply adding another gobfin so we will be doing that. The last option and it's the one that I prefer and it's the one if you're looking for the highest damage then you should do is to use a mount and certain mounts like pyron here when mounted make you deal additional damage as the player and in pyron's case it's fire damage that you deal although different mounts will allow you to do different types of damage and the damage you deal is much higher than simply having another gobfin and of course it's a handy thing having a mount in your team of course this only works for ground mounts and you can't get a flying mount in this way so you will have to decide if you're going for the ground mount with higher damage or whether you're going for lower damage but having a flying mount. It's really your choice. In this choice, I'm going for the ground mount with the extra damage. When you're adding the Pyron to your team, you will want to have him with Stronghold Strategist and Vanguard to boost your attack and defense one last time. The third and final thing we can do to boost our attack is to add attack appendants and these increase your attack when equipped. Usually you find them in chests but they're not found evenly in chests. The chests inside of animal sanctuaries usually drop them a lot more frequently than anywhere else. Last but not least, we have to choose our weapon. And as I mentioned, you can go rocket launcher, although it's not everyone's type of gameplay, or you can go for a gun. And personally, the thing that works out best ammo wise, which really is the limiting factor with all the guns in the game is the pump action shotgun. It gives you the best damage per shot. And that means you don't require as much ammo to use and that means you don't have to spend hours after every dungeon farming gunpowder or whatever to actually use your gun. If you want to get even higher damage, you can farm the legendary schematic of the weapon you're choosing. And for me, I needed to farm the Alpha Suzaku in the desert and every world boss has a 3% chance to drop a legendary schematic. And after only three kills, I managed to get the legendary pump action shotgun, which was very lucky, but it's definitely something that's worth doing as the damage is almost twice as much as the common one. So there we have it then guys, our build and you're ready to go out and fight in the end game and doing even the highest level 4 or 5 dungeons should be a breeze with this build. And as I mentioned, the only thing things that shouldn't work really are the 4 legendaries as guns just don't really deal too much damage to them no matter how much attack you have, except maybe the rocket launcher, the legendary one as well. But for regular guns, you just don't have enough ammo to make it worth doing, and just using pals will just work better. But pretty much everything else in the game will be able to be killed very easily with the shotgun, or whatever gun you are using. Guys, like and subscribe for more useful guides for Pal World, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Bye.